Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about how does the European Union finance itself? Where does the money come from? We're now in Parliament uh, negotiating the budget for next year. And we will have negotiations with the councils, with the ministers, and uh, we will decide how much we spend and how uh, is that money allocated. But where does the money come from? Uh, that's not a strange question to ask because there is something unusual about the European Union. Unlike the member states, which all have the ability to impose taxes on different things, uh, businesses, citizens, uh, activities, work, whatever, the European Union doesn't have the ability to raise taxes. It, uh, it has an unusual way to finance itself. Let me break it down for you and make it as simple as possible. Suppose that the European Union wanted to spend 100 euros. Where would these 100 euros come from? There are three main sources of money that finance these 100 euros. 15 euros would come from custom duties. The European Union is a customs union. It has a common external border, customs border. Every good and service that comes in may have a tariff, a duty that it has to pay in order to be sold here. And that duty goes to finance the budget of the EU largely. There is some share, 20% of that money goes to the member state. Second, value-added tax. Uh, value-added tax is more or less harmonized across the Union. Countries have a common system, even though they have different rates. And a very small share of that value-added tax goes directly to the budget of the Union. That would be 13 euros, okay? 15 euros customs, 13 euros of value-added tax. We are at 28. We have to finance 100 euros. Where do they come from? The bulk of the money comes from a direct contribution for the member states. That is, each member state writes check, if you want, to the European Union. And that's the heart of why this uh, way to finance itself is not efficient and creates a lot of friction between the states. Because if the European Union has a priority and all the member states agree on a particular priority, then it has to be financed and then some countries, which are next contributors, ha net contributors, have to make a, a contribution they consider potentially uh, disproportional and that makes uh, for, for friction. For example, in the 80s and early 90s, the UK was really upset about what it considered an excessive contribution and Margaret Thatcher negotiated a rebate, which was a check that the European Union sends back to the United Kingdom after all of this is calculated. Uh, not only that, uh, the, the Brexit referendum was still about this issue. Uh, many in the UK felt, or, or said at least, that the UK was contributing too much. Famously, Boris Johnson uh, made a picture of himself in front of a bus with a figure of £350 million, pounds, which was, they argued wrongly, the contribution per week that the UK was making to the European Union. And part of the referendum success was saying this £350 million pounds is going to be recovered and spent in NHS. In fact, as we now know, there is much more than the UK gets from the European Union and much less than Spain, that it was then said. But OK, that's, that was some of the lights on the Brexit referendum. The point is that this is an inefficient way to finance the European Union. Uh, there is a lot of debate in the Member States and in Parliament about how could we finance the European Union better. There is a discussion about own resources, developing new ways to finance the Union. And in future uh, videos, I will tell you about it and, and discuss which ones make sense and why. I hope that was interesting. Thank you.